Should I say okay? Give me thumbs. Hello, good morning. Happy October month. This is the Breast Cancer Awareness Month where we all gather together to remind ourselves as to what we should be doing for our population and what people need to know about breast cancer. I'm Dr. Mary Bello. I work at King's College Hospital as a consultant oncoplastic breast surgeon. I also do aesthetic surgery. I trained in the UK at Nottingham Breast Institute, where I also was a consultant and then I was also a consultant at Leeds University Teaching Hospital. Uh, my training has all been in the UK. I moved to the UAE three and a half years ago, started out at a medic clinic, and now I set up the King's College Hospital Breast Unit. Thank you very much for taking time this morning to join us, and I hope we will go away today better informed about breast cancer. Breast cancer is one of the commonest cancer in the world. At least a quarter out of a hundred, meaning, let me put numbers to it so it makes sense. 25 out of a hundred women will suffer from breast cancer. It's the fifth commonest cause of death that women will die for. And every year we get at least 15%, that is 15 out of a hundred people who are women who are, who are dying all due to breast cancer. That's a bit scary and a bit daunting, which is why we want to make people aware because it is a disease that we can do something about. The estimated lifetime risk of breast cancer is put in the figure of one out of eight women will have breast cancer. It isn't different here in the UAE. In the UAE, strangely, we are seeing breast cancer in a younger age group of patients. And when they do come to see us, sadly, they tend to be more aggressive, what we call locally advanced breast cancer. So their treatment then become more intensive. The special thing about the UAE is such a wonderful community where you have a migratory population, meaning people from all over the world tend to be here. So has that contributed to this difference in the incidence? Little wonder, I couldn't quite explain it. We know that when people develop breast cancer, especially in the developing countries, they don't do as well. Reason being that the healthcare service in developing country is a lot poorer Take, for instance, in Africa, the incidence is much higher compared to what you have in the United States or compared to what you have in Europe. Looking at these slides, you can see the proportion in, in Africa, it's something like 45 out of 100, while in developed countries, it's about 27 out of 100, making the incidence about four to five times higher. So places like UAE, where you have such mixed bag of population, you get to get a lot of diversity. Annually, about two and a half, 2.5 thousand, 2,400 women are dying from breast cancer. We keep thinking of breast cancer as a women disease. That's not strictly true. Men can also have breast cancer. The incidence in men for every say 100 women, women who have breast cancer, you will find one man with breast cancer. Breast cancer tends to be a disease of aging women because we know that as you get older, the incidence of cancer gets commoner. However, that doesn't mean young people do not get breast cancer. As I already alluded to, we have found that less than 40 in this society tend to have more breast cancer in comparison to European countries. Annually, meaning year on year, on, on top of this incidence, you find that there's a 1% increase in the amount of people having breast cancer. As it is put, 
every woman's lifetime risk is in general one in eight. When you're younger, the risk is one in 50. But as you get older, looking at this slide, as you can see, the incidence that's for the younger people, one in 50, for the older people, one in 13. So, so it is commoner when you are older and about 1% of all breast cancers, like I have alluded to previously, is found in the male population. Well, it's not all about doom and gloom. There are other cancers that do occur in people and hopefully at the end of this presentation, you will see what we can do about breast cancer to change these statistics. So worldwide, majority of cancers that occur in women tend to be breast cancer, as you can see from this slide. Other cancers such as cervical cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer can also occur in women, but breast cancer again tops the list. Most people would think that breast cancer is due to genetics. That's not strictly true. So we must remember that only five to 10 out of 100 breast cancers that are diagnosed are due to the genetic factor. The common ones we always talk about is the BRCA1 and the BRCA2 gene when they become abnormal in our genetic makeup, then they are unable to function adequately, which then puts a lady's risk of contracting breast cancer higher. And when you have this gene, it doesn't invariably follow that you end up having breast cancer. It's just that the lifetime risk, meaning by the time you reach the age of 70 or 80, if you had the BRCA1, your lifetime risk of contracting breast cancer it's about 50 to 70 percent and for bracket to eight uh, the lifetime risk it's slightly lower what this means is that when you have these genes you can do something about it i have put here two slides comparing cancers that occur in men and cancers that tend to be commoner in women as you can see in women breast cancer towers the list again, while in men, other cancers like prostate cancer, lung cancer, colorectal cancer tends to be more common. So, is this that women are all going to perish? No, obviously, if we have so many breast cancer and yet we are surviving breast cancer, then there is a lot of good news about breast cancer. In the United Kingdom, looking at the epidemiological studies, the overall survivor in between in five years, when they look at the statistics of 2001 to 2006, 82 percent, that is 82 out of 100 people during that period did survive their cancer. That's not the case with other cancers. So a lot of good news there. And again, if you look at this slide, for a lady who has had breast cancer and who is cleared of the breast cancer, in comparison with somebody who never had breast cancer, you can see their survival parallel each other, meaning breast cancer picked up early, properly treated, women will live to die from natural causes. Again, if you compare the incidence of people dying from other cancers, in women, you can see that the number of women fall at the bottom of this slide in comparison to the number of women who would die from either heart disease or smoking related condition or women who have heart attack or lung cancer. So it is still good news. So even though breast cancer is very common, it is a cancer that we can do something about. And another good news, which I will be referring to later on, is that it isn't the treatment, the local treatment, meaning mastectomy or lumpectomy that keeps people alive, because most people, once they have breast cancer, they feel, oh, just take the breast off. That's not true. A properly treated conservative treatment, such as lumpectomy, in the suitable cases, not everybody can have it. The survivor, if you did that, in suitable cases, adequately treated with the additional treatment that is required. The survival of those with um, 
mastectomy or lumpectomy again about the same. So what do we need to know? What's the take home message? Are there things that you can do to stop you from having breast cancer? Are there risk factors? Well, some of it is out of our control because as I've already alluded to, majority of women will have breast cancer. So it's a female disease. It's all to do because we're such beautiful creatures. We're made beautiful, but at the end of it, it comes with a price we take to have breast cancer. So being a woman is a risk factor. And again, I said from previous slide, that as you get older, the risk of breast cancer increases. The factors that maybe we can mitigate against are some of the things we have control over. For instance, hormonal factors. People with very dense breasts or mammogram, are there things they can do that they can pick up abnormality quicker? Sometimes when women come to us and we assess them, we find certain sort of findings in their breasts, what we call benign breast conditions that are risk factors. And we offer such patients the opportunity to remove these risk lesions. So removing those, again, reduces the risk of contracting breast cancer. Again, we know that people who have had previous breast cancer or who have a genetic abnormality where they have a syndrome of thyroid cancer, bowel cancer or skin cancer may be more prone. So such people, maybe we can keep more careful monitoring, more regular checks on such patients. And again, people who have been exposed at very early age, years gone by when you had Hodgkin's lymphoma and you had treatment, you needed what we call mental radiation where you have your breastbone radiated to kill off the cancers in the lymphatic tissue there. Because the breast tissue, as you can appreciate, is a third organ sitting next to these lymph nodes. It kind of puts those people at a higher risk of breast cancer. So when we find out such people, we should monitor them closely. Lifestyle, quite important. Alcohol consumption in excessive amount or dietary high fat content of animal fat may predispose people to having more breast cancers. In this society, it's not usually much of a problem, but in the Western world, where I came from, that seems to be quite of a challenge because ladies, they drink to the point that sometimes they become legless. Thankfully, that's not the situation here. Having said so, you still have women over here who do have a high consumption of alcohol, especially in the migrant population. Again, as I previously alluded to, only 5 to 10 percent, meaning 5 to 10 out of 100 breast cancer, it's due to the inherited gene. The factors that may help us in reducing breast cancer risk is things that we can do to reduce the estrogen bombardment of our breast tissue. So for instance, these days, most ladies would rather choose to have children at an older age because they've got career uh, ambition, quite rightly too, to meet up and they feel having kids so early kind of interferes. And when they have babies, they may be too posh to breastfeed and because they feel their breasts will be going southwards. Again, so this is actually to their own detrimental factor. I'm not saying if you breastfeed, you wouldn't have breast cancer. That's not true. However, we think that it might reduce the risk. And when you have kids at an earlier age, it reduces the risk because you give your breast a bit of a break from the bombardment of too much uh, estrogen. There were studies once upon a time that did allude to the fact that if you had vitamin D deficiency, it could contribute, but the jury is still out on that. So things that we know we can help, then let's do so. So coming back to those risk factors. So girls, ladies, try and get married and have kids sooner rather than later, but I'm not saying don't have a career ambition. I'm not saying make sure your daughters get married very young. But this is just the things we know. How does this affect the breast? Because if you marry late and you don't have kids early, your breast is not rested at any point in time. 
whilst when you're breastfeeding or when you're pre pregnant, the breast is rested from the bombardment of estrogen and progesterone. And women who have many children, maybe less risk, haven't said so too, you can still find women who have had 10 children and who still have breast cancer. These are just risk factors. They aren't completely exclusive of abolishing breast cancer. Again, very quickly, breastfeeding helps. Very tall people or very big people with a lot of fat tissue tends to have extra storage of estrogen in their tissue. Therefore, it's additional estrogen bombardment in their breast tissue. So those are things that we can help. Those are the lifestyles that perhaps we can mitigate against to reduce our risk of breast cancer. So to recap very quickly, uh, with breast cancer, there are things in our hands, we have tools in our hands, such as simple lifestyle changes, exercising, reducing the excessive alcohol consumption, going to the gym so that you're not overweight, so that your estrogen component will be less, having children, and obviously, um, when one gets to that age of menopause, don't bombard your breast with additional hormone replacement. Again, in this society, not much of a problem, but in the Western world, women don't like to age, they want to stay young forever. So any small hot flush, they want to be on HRT, that's the hormone replacement therapy forever and ever. HRT taken for a short period of time, three to five years, is fine. It's when you get to double digits, that's when the worry starts. So there are other things that we do find in the breast. So it's not every lump in the breast that is cancerous. And it's not every benign lungs that will put you at a risk of cancer. So at young age, we have benign conditions like cysts, fibroadenoma, and obviously breast cancer creeps in very quietly. Hence, when we find anything in the breast, any lump in the breast, it needs to be assessed because breast cancer can be hiding behind this benign condition. I will explain why I put this slide in a little bit further on. So, who are the patients who have the genetic factors of breast cancer increase? Like I alluded to, the BRCA genes, those with dense breasts, those who have certain benign conditions in the breast, which we worry about, like atypical doctor hyperplasia. Those people tend to have higher incidence of breast cancer. And when we find those, we like to see to the end by ad offering adequate and proper treatment. So, breast cancer awareness month. Why do we need to be aware of breast cancer? What can we do? For any disease to be made publicly and internationally and worldwide a focus in the month of October, it means there are things we can do. Any condition that qualifies for screening, which breast cancer ticks all the boxes, those are the kind of things WHO wants us to popularize to the population because we can do something about it. You don't need to be part of the statistics. We know that we can pick up breast cancer at an early stage. We can pick up signs of people who have breast cancer at an early stage. This is what screening is about. And screening for any disease condition like breast it's not an invasive procedure, it's not a dangerous procedure, if anything, it's very helpful. Unfortunately, it's not every part of the world that has such programs. In Europe, we have mass screening. However, in this part of the world, what we tend to do is more of opportunistic screening, where uh, people just randomly come and get screened. So you can still do the same here. There are so many facilities up and down UAE and elsewhere where you can go and get your breast screening done. So what do we do when we talk about breast screening? For breast screening, what we tend to do is a mammogram. It is not enough to go to a clinic to say, oh, I just need an ultrasound scan. No, ultrasound scan is not used for screening. The only screening tool that we are aware of is mammogram, taking two views. Yes, here we do supplement with ultrasound scan, and I will explain to, why, to you why we do that. In the UK, back as long as 1987, screening started, 
and the aim of it was to try and pick up early signs of breast cancer. And in those women who don't have breast cancer, to also reassure them that it's okay, they can carry on living life. And those who have early signs, we can then go ahead and do the necessary assessment, what we call triple assessment. And the triple assessment is more involving, but screening is purely mammogram done in two views, taken um, through a, a specialized machine called the mammogram machine, where the breast tissue is put between these two plates and then stretched out so that any abnormality can be seen. And after that, if everything is fine, we don't have to do anything. The situation here in UAE, we start screening from the age of 40 and that carries on every year up to the age of 50. And then after 50 to about 72 year, the mammogram is quite acceptable. Why every year from 40? Because from 40, from 40, the breast tissue is very dense, so you need to examine it more regularly. When you get to the age of 50, the breast tissue becomes fatty, and then two yearly is more than enough. In Europe and UK, for example, we screen every three yearly. Their mass screening is what happens here in this society, is opportunistic screening. That's what we tend to do. Mammogram machine, like I have shown you, and what do we look for? We look for, we look at the breast tissue, we look at the breast, whether there's any density there, and the kind of things we like to see if you stretch the breast out, you want to look at the components of the breast, the duct system of the breast, which are the areas where actually the breast cancer tends to occur. So when people have screening, what the radiologists are looking at, is there something abnormal, like as you can see on this slide in mass, or is there a distortion, meaning the pattern of the films that they are looking at? Or are there speckles of little, little white chalk, what we call microcalcification? Or is there just a, a dissimilarity between the two films? If you look at these two mammograms, you can see there's some density here on the left side, and on the right side here, there's nothing. So obviously, when you see things like this, you want to interrogate this area a little bit further by performing other tests, such as taking a biopsy, what we call core biopsy, or using a needle to just draw out fluid. And once that is done, you then send it to the pathologist who looks at it. And such patients get to see people like myself, breast surgeons, we examine you, we order any additional test that is required. And once we get the report, we can tell you whether it is abnormal or whether you have early signs of breast cancer, for instance, DCIS, or one of the pre-cancer conditions that puts your risk higher. And once you deal with these early signs, then you're good to go. You can live your life and die from natural causes. But if you wait until you get breast cancer before things are done, then the clock is turned back many, 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 many years forward. And you don't want that. That's why people die from breast cancer, living things till when they are late, living things until when it's spread elsewhere. Sadly, there are lots and lots of myths about breast cancer, and I'm hoping that this month, the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, all of you who have joined us today will be able to tell your friends that actually screening is not dangerous. Screening is one of the best way of saving lives. It increases the survival. It enables us to pick up early stage breast cancer where things can be done. The common story here is that when you take biopsy, you will cause cancer in the breast tissue. Again, that's not true. When you don't take a biopsy, you'll be missing things that are cancerous. Therefore, the cancer won't spread. And doing a little test, which is a biopsy, does not cause cancer. Please tell your friends, tell your family members, tell your spouses, tell your sisters, tell everybody that needle tests, when recommended in appropriate situation, should not be declined. Please, ladies, help me spread this news, if nothing else. Again, a lot of people go around thinking mammogram causes breast cancer. No. If you look back, I did show you things that we can pick up on mammogram, all those abnormalities. 
If you don't do mammogram, you may never see them. By the time you start feeling a lump in your breast, it is too late. It's grown. It's now cancer. It's not pre-cancer. Then we're talking about treatment. We're not talking about cure. The local situation here in the UAE is that, like I said, we screen at a younger age, 40, because the epidemiological studies have shown that the kind of cancers we're seeing here tends to occur at the younger age groups. Therefore, we are doing that. Sadly, young people don't like mammogram. Young people don't want to come to hospital, so the uptake is poor. If you compare this to societies in developed countries, the uptake for screenings is in the region of 90 to 98 percent. We need to do something. Please make this breast awareness moment your period of passing this message to other women that we have the tools, we have the means of decreasing women's mortality. We need to wipe out breast cancer. We need to stamp out breast cancer. Screening is not dangerous. Screening is carried out by mammogram. In the UK, in 2006, the number of lives that we save every year is close to 2,000 women lives saved every year. Can you imagine those 2,000 women, if they never went for screening, would have had 2,000 sisters or mothers or even fathers who had breast cancer that died. Do we do screening on men? No, we don't because it is not a very common disease. If you remember, I said a WHO recommendation for any disease that needs to be screened means that disease needs to be very prevalent in that particular group. So because only few men will have breast cancer, it's not really useful to be screening men. But when a man finds a lump in his breast, they must go and have it checked out. And again, please, Screen does not lead to over-treatment. Yes, you might pick up over uh, little, little things that you could have ignored, but who wants to be part of the statistics? I don't want to have a pre-cancer condition and wait for five, ten years until I have proper cancer and then I have it spread elsewhere and then I know that my lifetime will not be as long as if I had been and they picked up this stuff and it was cleared. So we do save lives yes about two to three ladies may have had things removed that maybe may never become cancer but again who wants to be the guinea pig who wants to be picked up and watched if you find something wrong let's deal with it breast cancer is such an elusive disease let's not play with it let's stop out breast cancer and again for every screening that we're doing every two years we are preventing two deaths and for any woman who attends screening year on year on year on at the end of 10 years you can imagine how much life time she could have saved these are not figures that have blocked out these are figures that have been reviewed by the Crocrane review which means the biggest collection of all data internationally so with screening we, the absolute mortality from breast cancer is reduced by 20 to 40 percent. That is 20 to 40 women out of 100 who should have died because they went for screening, they reduce their chances of dying. How compelling is this statistic? Please spread the news. Breast cancer screening is the only tool. When you get to 40, start going for screening. Yes, it might be causing some anxiety, but it does reduce mortality. It does reduce death from cancer. And yes, sometimes people think, oh, if you keep going for mammogram, you're going to end up irradiating the breast and the breast will become cancerous. Yes, there's no doubt about that. But look at the statistics again. For every 25,000 cases of cancer you have, only one of these may be because of excessive mammogram. And the message of all this is, it's very common in this society when we don't have mass screening, meaning people have to go and seek out screening, that you might end up with unscrupulous clinicians who subject you to unnecessary mammogram. Choose where you go to, wait until you reach the right age, and also if you have something wrong, 
that's when you should go for them to check it out. Don't just when you're trying to say, oh, my mother had breast cancer, I want mammogram. No, that's not right. See the right people, let them do the right thing for you. And when you pick up breast cancer at an early stage, the chances of having very radical surgery like a mastectomy is much less when we pick it up early. That's why we can offer ladies minimal surgery like lumpectomy. So again, it's beneficial. So when things are picked up, that's when we do the test. Uh, it's MRI is screening too. No, again, I have ladies come to my surgery and they say to me, oh, I don't want a mammogram. Can you not just do an ultrasound scan or an MRI? No, MRI is not a screening tool. There are a special group of people where MRI is indicated. For instance, those people with the genetic abnormality like the BRCA1, BRCA2, or those who were exposed at an early stage to um, a radiation treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma, or ladies who have very dense breasts. If you remember, I said there are some features that we tend to, those are the risk group. Those are the people who the clinicians will pick up and say to you, you need a, an MRI. But internationally or worldwide, we don't use MRI as screening tool for everybody. What about the warning signs? I've talked a lot about screening. What can you watch out for to help you know that something is going wrong that you need to see a clinician for? In my books, any change at all that is new in your breast, please get somebody who is well equipped to go, to go through it with you and make sure because breast cancer does masquerade in a variety of forms. Sometimes breast cancer presents as a lump in the breast, which is not painful. So uh, some people will say to you, oh, if it is not painful, then it is not, uh, if it is not painful, don't worry about it. That's not true. Breast cancer can be painless, it can be painful. Breast cancer can also present as nipple discharge. Breast cancer can present as a change and a very severe eczema around the nipple and the dark patch, what we call the areola. Breast cancer can present as a sudden change in your breast size. Say so for instance, your breast, which was a D cup breast, suddenly becomes a B. You want to find out why. So such signs, look out for it. And please, when you have them, don't be your own doctor. Don't go to Dr. Google. Go to Dr. Bello or the other breast surgeons in town so that we can check you out. Uh, how do you examine yourself? Every month, a week after you have had your period, I suggest you take time, look at your breast. If you don't have a period anymore, then choose the time of the month and stick to that time. Sit, be vain, just look at the breast, the contour, any distortion, push your hand into your hips and see if there's any change in the nipple or in the breast skin and raise your arm up again to see if there's any distortion. So just simple look, look first before you touch and then when, after you've had a look, lie down and feel the breast in a very careful manner. Don't feel with the tips of your finger, feel with the palm, palmar aspect of your finger. And what you need to do is you feel with the palm and go around the breast tissue, going around in a very systematic clockwise manner, pressing firmly to see if there's any distortion in the breast. And if there's distortion there, make a mental note of it so you can see your doctor. And also don't forget to feel your neck area and in your armpit, because sometimes breast cancer can present in those areas without any lump in the breast. They present as a lump in the armpit or in the side of the neck. Those are the ones we call occult breast cancer which are very mischievous. There's no footprint in the breast, but the breast cancer has spread all already. After you've done all of these tests, in the shower again, you feel through the breast tissue like I showed you. You feel all around the breast tissue. You feel the side of your neck. You feel in your armpit. Once you've done all those three steps, then you have completed your examination. So feeling in the armpit, feeling in the neck area, and like I already said, men do have breast cancer. As they get older, their risk increases because as they get older, they begin to 
reduce the testosterone and they might have had estrogen exposure or they have a family history of breast cancer. And what's the difference when men have breast cancer? They tend to present to us much later. One, they're shy to come to the clinic. Two, they feel, oh, well, it's just the men thing. It's just my breast issues. Okay. No, please, if your breast changes, or your husband, your brothers, please tell them. They should see the, uh, the surgeons so that we can make sure that it isn't a gynecomastia, which is a benign enlargement, because we do know that men do present, and when they present, it's usually quite advanced, and we don't want that. Also, we know that men can also have estrogen-sensitive breast cancer, just like women, so their treatment is quite similar. So, but the only difference, like I say, they present later, and therefore, their survival is not as good as us women, who are always on point, with our breasts. So please encourage your spouses to also check their breasts once a month. And um, so when men have breast cancer, the treatment is basically the same. Yes, they get the side effects from everything that women have. So here at King's College Hospital, we do have a dedicated center where men are seen just as women. We ensure you have your privacy. We hoping that the thousands of women and men who travel this journey, breast cancer diagnosis management is a journey, that we as a team can support them. If you look on our website, you will see the stages and the journey when you do come. And our aim here is that when you leave us, you will have a seamless, efficient care that beats none in the that, that UAE none can beat us. Our standards are quite high. We have friendly staff who are quite happy to go through things with you, and we will not leave you in this journey. We screen people here, we have deals all year round. Rather than pay the astronomical amount, if your insurance will not approve it, 350 Durham for a mammogram. It's cheap enough, it's really cheap. Ladies, we buy dresses more expensive than that. We have educational materials here, we have focus group, we have support group, and our aim is that when you come, you access the clinic on the same day, you get all your tests done. You get your mammogram, your ultrasound. If you need a biopsy, obviously we need insurance approval, but the mammogram, ultrasound, the seeing the surgeon and getting an idea of what's happening in one stop clinic. That's what we practice. Be breast aware. Month of October, we all think about breast cancer. But please, ladies and gentlemen, if there are men in the audience, brothers, sisters, anybody that you know, we need to encourage each other to be aware of our breasts every day of the year because the breast tissue changes. There is no standard breast. The breast when you were 10 is different from the breast when you were 20. Your 20 year old breast will be different from your breast when you are 50 and so on and so forth. And your breast at the beginning of the month is different from your breast at the end of the month. So ladies, please examine yourself. Let's beat breast cancer. Let's not become part of the statistics. I am very passionate that no woman should have breast cancer and demise as a result of breast cancer. When it is a condition that we can cure, don't be scared of breast cancer. Thank you very much for taking time this morning to join in, in the webinar, and I hope we will spread this news to other ladies. Those who don't have insurance, we are giving deals all year round, 350 dirhams. It's not too much money to pack from. If that will save your life, thank you for listening. Uh, I will give you the opportunity to ask any questions if you have any questions at all. Uh, I have a question here from Mr. Uh, from Rihanna Khan. I believe all cancerous cells are dominant. Is there any way you can prevent breast cancer? Well. All cancer cells are not dominant. Breast cancer can be prevented by early diagnosis and sometimes just lifestyle changes is what you need to do to reduce your chances of 
having breast cancer, like I said, going to the gym, don't drink too much, don't have too, body, too big a body mass. Also, medical insurance, not paying for mammogram, I've already responded to that. Unfortunately, some insurance will not cover it. But what we've done is we've put the price right down, 350 dollars for you to be able to use that opportunity to have your breast tested. Manisha, your question was, is breast cancer hereditary? Well, only five to 10 out of 100 breast cancer is inherited through the um, BRCA gene. And that's a very small number of cancers. So majority of breast cancer is because we're beautiful creatures, estrogen and progesterone. Uh, on animals, somebody else wanted to know whether breast control pills would increase or decrease the risk of breast cancer. There have been studies, the Well Women study, which showed that women who took oral contraceptive pills for a very, very long period of time, over 15 years, may put themselves at a slightly higher risk. But as soon as you stop taking the oral contraceptive risk, uh, tablet, your risk falls back to normal. So the answer to that question is that oral contraceptive pills on its own is not panacea of having breast cancer, i.e. it does not cause breast cancer. Uh, the other question which I also have is how long should a woman breastfeed uh, and how, well, breastfeed for as long as you want, as long as you feel comfortable to do so. Uh, and does breastfeeding forever stop breast cancer? No, you can still have a woman who is pregnant, who is also breastfeeding, who has breast cancer. But when you breastfeed, you just give yourself a break from the bombardment of estrogen and progesterone. And somebody wanted to know why mammograms are not recommended under 40. The reason being that when you're under 40, your breast tissue is very dense. As a result of that, when we do mammograms, it's like driving through a big fog, so you don't see the breast tissue very well. Hence, after 40, when the breast tissue begins to become more fatty, that's when mammograms are recommended. But however, if you're only 40 and you happen to have breast cancer, there are other tests we can do. We have tomograms, which is a specialized kind of um, test uh, that makes the breast a lot easier. And sometimes we recommend MRI. Somebody again asks, um, how frequent should somebody be having mammogram? From 40 to 50, the UAE recommendation, the government recommendation is that you should have mammogram every year. After 40, uh, sorry, after 50, every couple of years, we use ultrasound scan with our mammogram in the UAE for the simple fact that when you do screening here, only one doctor sees it, whilst in, the, in Europe and in UK or the rest of the world, we do what we call double reading, where multiple people read it. So supplementing with ultrasound scan makes it more accurate. And then somebody has asked, if your family has breast cancer history, what age should you start having mammogram? If your family has breast cancer history, what we need to do, what you need to do is to see somebody and then they will tell you what your risk of having breast cancer is, because we need to take a history. First degree relatives, second degree relatives or distant relatives, if they are first, second and there are two or three of those in addition to ovarian cancer, then you fall at a high risk and then we will recommend for you appropriately. We will tell up manage it to you. Another person said she had a fibroid removed back in 1991 to 2016 and had mammogram done in 2016. What does she need to do? Well, it depends on your age. Fibroid adenoma doesn't put you at a risk of breast cancer. But if you have any concerns, feel free, come and see me or any breast surgeon. Let's examine you, take a history, and then we can tell you what to do. Uh, what course of action of treatment does somebody who has breast cancer recall at other side needs to take? You need to see your breast oncologist, either the medical oncologist or the breast clinician. When we see you, we stage the cancer. 
staging meaning we do additional tests like PET scans, MRI, CTs, and then we would decide what type of cancer it is. Sometimes we need to change the type of treatment you were on completely. Sometimes you need chemotherapy, sometimes you need a different kind of tablet. Sometimes, sadly, it's what we call advanced metastatic disease and we can't do much but to palliate you, meaning to keep you comfortable and control your symptoms until you sadly move on to our maker. Uh, somebody has said uh, breastfeed baby, uh, what if the baby does not feed exclusively due to breastfeeding? It doesn't matter. Not everybody can breastfeed. Breastfeeding panacea is not a preventative cure for breast cancer. If your baby doesn't want to breastfeed, fine, supplement. It doesn't matter. You tried. Because you breastfed, it doesn't mean you can't have breast cancer. You can still have breast cancer. Uh, someone else wanted to know fibroadenoma, which they have had for three years in their breast, and she has been visiting and observing it, and the doctor said it's benign, but they never gave her a good scrutiny. Also, is there any age limitation to do mammogram? My advice to you is please go see a surgeon who knows what they are doing. I'm happy to see you. I would assess you. If you need further assessment, we'll do so. The best way of telling any woman that anything is free from cancer is proper adequate test, what we call triple assessment, which might involve a needle biopsy and then if it is a fibroadenoma, we don't necessarily need to remove it. We leave it. If they're big, we take them out. Otherwise, once the diagnosis is made, there's no point in becoming part of this, the treadmill. I know that doctors in this part of the world, they keep wanting to see people so that it's money generating. Please pick your doctors. Not all doctors are honest. So go to the right doctors so that they can do the honest things for you. Um, somebody say there is an, oh, sorry, an echo on this. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry about that. Everything is muted, I don't know why. Can you please share this presentation? It will be useful for women, you know. Yes, we will share the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so, so much. And I'm sorry that it was an echo. We cannot understand what you are saying. Mm. I'm sorry about that. Could it have been, should men be screened? Men shouldn't have screening. Men don't come for screening. Men, when they feel feeling long, they need to be tested. Ultrasound is okay after menopause. After menopause, you need proper triple assessment, which is a mammogram and ultrasound scan. And ultrasound is not a screening tool. In Qatar, there, there is a center which provides breast screening with 3D breast CT plus ultrasound. Is this just an accurate standard? Well, actually, the so-called 3D is what we call tomograms. Uh, in most centers, we do have tomograms and we use them for people whose breasts are very dense so that you can have kind of do a 3D viewing of the breast tissue. So it's, it's one of the new kits that they've added. Uh, does vigorous exercise, weightlifting, cause lumps in the breast? No, not really. You can have lumps that are just coincidental with weightlifting. Don't stop exercising. Please exercise. Can breast cancer uh, patient breastfeed? Of course, after you've had your treatment, you can breastfeed. Underwire does not cause breast cancer. Somebody asked, why is uh, mammogram not recommended for less than 35. I think I've already answered that. Uh, it's not sensitive, hence it's a waste of time. Yeah, the breast is too dense, but if you are under 35 and it's required, there are things we can do. We can do a special kind of mammogram. Thank you very much for those of you who joined, and I'm sorry for those people who have found the presentation difficult to listen to. I don't know what happened, not from my end, maybe your equipment. Are there any precautions that one should take to avoid breast cancer during menopause? Well, the precaution is regular screening. Go for your screening, go for your breast assessment every year. 
if that if you fall in that age group or every couple of years every two years uh, someone else says lots of uh, of her friends say that mammogram is very painful is that true no mammogram carefully done shouldn't be painful it is uncomfortable again all up and down the street so many people call themselves technicians and they are just there they just just in your breast so it makes it painful so pick the right centers and go for it um, breast screening last August and it was clear so does she need to do one again you are 31 years old you shouldn't be having mammogram every year so please don't subject yourself but if you have something wrong go and see your doctor so that you can do uh, something from you uh, assess you adequately is there a guarantee that once you went for operation you will not have the breast cancer again uh, that's not true Unfortunately, sometimes breast cancer can come back, what we call recurrence. Obviously, that depends on the type, the stage, and what kind of treatment you have. A lot of times when women present with breast cancer that is picked up, we have what we call micrometastasis, meaning the cancer has moved on. So in spite of treatment, it may lie quiet for several years and then reappear. So then it is treatment which is why I am preaching this today, go for screening so that you don't have breast cancer that needs to be treated. We want to pick up things that we can cure you. When we treat you, we don't cure you, we treat you. So treat, it's like having diabetes. Once you have diabetes, one can cure you, we can control it, we can treat it. A sonograph of the breast, can it help in detection? If you, if you have early menopause at the age of 40, for example, is there a higher chance of breast cancer? Congratulations, no. Perhaps that helps to reduce the bombardment of estrogen to the breast. However, as I say to you, every woman is at a risk of breast cancer. So people who start period late and have menopause early, they have a very limited period for to bombardment. So maybe that may be preventative but maybe it doesn't absolutely follow that it will stop you from having breast cancer. We don't normally use ultrasound for picking up breast cancer. It's not a screening tool. Mammogram is a screening tool. I did mention animal fat increases the risk. Well, animal fat because of the high fat intake. I'm not saying go vegan. No, just be sensible. Too much fat means you will put weight on. And are there any type of foods that you should that you should avoid to reduce breast cancer? Not really. Enjoy life. Don't drink too much. Don't overindulge in fatty stuff because fatty stuff makes you put weight on. And if you have a lot of weight that you're carrying, then obviously you have more extraneous source of estrogen. Um, can can you have Jumana? Can you have ultrasound every two years as you are under 40? Uh, actually, you, if you don't have any breast problem, there's nothing for you to keep going to the ultrasonographer for every two years. That's just doctors collecting money from you. If you have a problem, then you can see a doctor. What you should learn to do is learn how to examine yourself once a month, and if there are any concerns, you see the doctor. How often should a lady get screening? I've already answered that. Every year from 40 to 50, 50 to onwards, every two years. Do I recommend genetic tests to know the probability of having breast cancer? Only if you have a high risk with a strong family history with the BRCA gene mutation. I don't want ladies to line up to start have genetic tests. Only five to 10 out of 100 breast cancer is due to um, the genetic abnormality. Is there a connection between hyperthyroid and breast cancer? No. There are some syndrome where you have papillary cancer of the thyroid and other types of cancer like melanoma or bowel cancer that there's a syndrome where such people may be more predisposed to breast cancer. Wearing underwear, bra, every, no. Wearing bra is fine. Wear your bra, otherwise your breast will go south and you start looking for me to uplift it. So please wear your bra. It doesn't cause breast cancer. Fat deposits and lumps that prove dangerous in the long run. Fat deposits don't prove dangerous, lumps don't prove dangerous. All that proves dangerous is not knowing what is in your breast. So please 
when you get to the right age, have your screening. If someone didn't develop milk post delivery, is there any chance that they would develop breast cancer? No, there's no chance. Breast cancer majority is because we are women. If you couldn't breastfeed, it's not your fault. Breastfeeding on its own does not stop breast cancer. Um, fibroadenoma, I think I've answered that before. And um, another question, we're running out of time. Is there any age limitation to mammogram? Again, if you are 26, you shouldn't be having mammogram. If you are 30, you shouldn't be having mammogram. Regular screening mammogram from 40. You have a HER2 positive breast cancer. You finished your treatment last year. That means you need to stay on a particular medication called Hercetin for additional 12 years. Um, uh, can we have screening session organized at King's College for BH Women team? Uh, or, yeah, we can look into that. No problem. Thank you very much. I will take it to my management. We'll, we'll make a note of it. Yes, you can have. We'll arrange it and we'll send you information and you can come any day for your screening. Thank you. Yes, you can. And you have your results all on the same day. Uh, while sleeping, sleep, uh, should you take off your bra at night? Yeah, of course. If you feel more comfortable, take it off. Take it off. It's, it's, don't constrain yourself. Life is for living. So enjoy your life. Fibroid in the breast doesn't predispose you to cancer. It's not precancerous. There are certain types of lung that may occur with the fibro that can cause cancer. Uh, have two positive, I think I've answered that before. And um, wearing bra, I think I have answered that. Sorry if I haven't been able to get to you, but I am so grateful that you took time and thank you for the wonderful, wonderful questions you put across to me this morning. If I'm of any use to you, don't hesitate to reach out. We are here for you. We are here to stamp, stamp out breast cancer. With your help, girl power, we can do it. We can make breast cancer something that can be consigned to the archive. Thank you. Have a good, wonderful weekend.